Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Dr. David Hausman. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Zach, and I'm a board certified chiropractor of Tennessee. And I am too. So uh, with us being board certified chiropractors in, in uh, Tennessee, we actually in our training get a lot of information, a lot of schooling, and a lot of study time with vitamins with biochemistry of the human body and anatomy and physiology and so many other things. And with that, today we wanted to talk to you a little bit about vitamin D3. D3? Vitamin D3. Well, yeah, and, and a special form of vitamin D3, mycelized vitamin D3. What is it? Why is it so important? Um, and why is it better than just regular vitamin D or even regular forms of vitamin D3? So I guess we can dive right in. What does mycelized mean? Mycelized means uh, there is... Little, little mouses? Yeah, yeah, little mouse. Actually, no. So actually, <laughs> um, that means that it is surrounded by uh, lipids, which are fat compounds. And you may have taken vitamins in your past. And notice this says, please take with mill. Why is that? It's because some vitamins are water soluble, which means all you have to do to absorb it is drink water. The fat soluble vitamins such as vitamin D and three others, A, K, and E, mean that you have to take a meal for the body to properly absorb that vitamin. Right, However, so the vitamin itself, you can take it and if your body doesn't process that vitamin effectively, you really don't absorb a lot of it. Um, a lot of the vitamin D that's on the market right now, vitamin D3, isn't prepared the right way so you, you might be taking, for instance, 10,000 IUs prescribed by your doctor of vitamin D3, but it might be an oil form of that D3 and it isn't already mycelized, so your body will absorb, maybe out of that 10,000 IUs, 500 IUs. And so the potency and bioavailability comes into question depending on the form of D3 that you're actually consuming. Um, so really the, the biggest thing to start thinking about is the form of vitamin D3. We should probably back up a second though and explain what is D3 and why is it so important in the body? So vitamin D in general is one of the primary vitamins for transporting things around the body into where it needs to be, such as absorbing calcium in the body. People that have osteoporosis typically have a vitamin D deficiency because their body cannot absorb the proper amount of calcium and their bones start to get brittle because your body absorbs calcium from the bones using for other things that it needs. And it's also a very important, uh, it's almost like a hormone, isn't it? Yeah, um, more or less, like we call it a vitamin, right? But the reality is when our body absorbs vitamin D3, um, it almost acts like a hormone because there's so many different cells in the human body, heart cells, some skin cells, um, smooth, smooth muscle cells that all have receptors on the cell for vitamin D3. And so vitamin D3 acts as an activator, if you will, um, where it allows those different cells in the body to be able to perform functions that they need to. So it's almost like a gatekeeper. Um, and hormones are very much like that in that the hormone itself can create and or impede a whole other slew of processes in the body. And so vitamin D3 is very similar because it acts in that same type of style. How do we get D3? That's always a common question too that patients ask. So vitamin D3, since it's already pre-soluble, you don't have to do anything special to absorb it. Um, it can go right, in, right under the tongue. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. so yeah, so how we would take it. Um, oh, so vitamin, okay. yeah, but vitamin D3, so Dr. Zach's essentially saying that the uh, type of vitamin D3 that we take can be in like a capsule form as a supplement, or you could take it in a lipid form. And, and often if you take it in a lipid form, it's more readily available and it gets into the bloodstream faster because when we squirt it under our tongue, we have those uh, sublingual arteries that are right under your tongue. So if you squirt it under your tongue as a tincture and then let it sit in your mouth for a couple of seconds, typically about 15 to 20 seconds, much of that absorbs right into the bloodstream and then you'll swallow the rest, which mycelized vitamin D3 is really, really cool because the D3 molecules are actually protected by all of those lipids. And maybe we can throw up a picture here on the screen and show you kind of what that looks like where it's encased in those fats. And so it acts as a protection for it. So when you drink the rest of that liquid and you swallow it and it gets in your stomach, the acid in your stomach doesn't break down and destroy the D3. And that's often what happens in other forms of vitamin D3 when, when you 
take it, you swallow it, in the capsule form and some other oil forms that aren't mycelized, when it gets in your stomach, it just destroys much of that D3. So by the time it finally passes through your tract to the small intestine and gets absorbed into the blood, your body doesn't have a lot to actually absorb because much of it has been destroyed. D3 and sunshine, like how our body exposed to sun makes D3 from the original form of D, maybe we can talk a little bit about that. Right, yeah, so uh, it's a very common uh, expression that, hey, go outside, get your vitamin D. Yeah. What does that mean though? So those UV rays, similar to plants, it's probably our most similar thing to plants, is uh, our skin absorbs that UV radiation and uh, the body turns the normal vitamin D1, I guess is what we can call it, into vitamin D3, where our body can properly use it. It goes straight into our blood, which also helps prevent osteo or or osteoporosis. Osteoporosis and as well osteopenia, as- And osteopenia, which is decreased bone density. Yeah, and um, os or the blood thing. Arterial uh, calcification. Arterial calcification, yes. It's like I could read your mind. Right, That's yes. incredible. Um, yeah, so basically what you're saying is vitamin D3 is a vitamin. Our body doesn't make vitamins. We only get vitamins from the food that we eat. So the food that we do eat is vitamin D, which is a form of the vitamin that our body can't use. So the only way that our body can convert that vitamin D to the form that it can use, vitamin D3, is through the right amount of sunlight exposure, um, specifically UV radiation from the sun. And all the research shows that between the times of 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. is the peak sun exposure for where you can get the most amount of UV radiation. Um, and the crazy thing about it is you have to get it on the core of your body for your body to be able to use that UV radiation to convert the vitamin D to the D3, which is what we want. And I don't know about you, but I'm not running around with my shirt off between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. every day getting my core exposed to sunlight. And it's a minimum of about 15 minutes a day, uh, 15 minutes a day. So that's kind of crazy when you look at it. So the likelihood is if you're watching this video, you probably have low levels of D3. Um, and the best way to check that is a functional medicine doctor, a chiropractor, or a clinic that is able to run blood work for you, like we can here in Nashville, Tennessee, and actually tell you what your levels are. If your levels are lower than 60, you are low and deficient in vitamin D3. Moving on to the next topic, why is mycelized D3 really good if you're vegan or vegetarian? It's a great question, Dr. Dave. So, um... In the past, the majority of vitamin D3 supplementation has been mostly animal-based. However, with... What kind of animals? Sheep and... And their wool? That's and, crazy. Yes, so yes. most of the supplements, the D3 supplements on the market right now are sourced from sheep's wool? Ooh, Ooh funky. Uh, um, mycelized vitamin D3 is actually plant-sourced. So because it's plant-sourced, it's really, really... Uh, safe and therefore it's a great option for you if you're vegan or vegetarian. We've talked about mycelized, lipids, fat, absorption, all kinds of stuff with the vitamin D3. So the take home message at the end of the day is, do you need D3? Are you deficient? Well, if you haven't tested with blood levels, you probably are. And the reason why you probably are is you probably don't get enough sun exposure to wear outside into the core. Yeah, man, yes. right on that core. Um, so if you're watching the video, you're likely deficient in D3, and if you're already taking a D3 supplement, run to your medicine cabinet or your supplement cabinet, look at it and see if it's mycelized. It should say it right on the bottle. If it's not mycelized, you can pretty much bet you're probably not absorbing a lot of it. Um, functional medicine doctors like myself, like Dr. Zach, We've done blood work with patients and seen that their levels being really, really low. We would prescribe in the past regular D3 supplement for them, take 10,000 IUs a day, take 50,000 IUs a day, super dose, to try and get those blood levels up higher to where they need to be above the threshold. And after two months of taking regular D3 supplement, same levels when we do follow up blood test. But then, literally within a week and a half or two weeks of taking mycelized D3 and switching it, boom, levels shoot up 25 points. Boom, levels shoot up 17 points in the blood. So we know that it works. Um, so take home message at the end of the day, 
looking at the bottle, if the D3 isn't the form that it needs to be in, go get yourself some mycelized D3 and start getting your body the D3 format that you, it can readily use, that's readily bioavailable, that it doesn't have to convert to a different form, and that's protected from your stomach acid to get into your blood. Anything else? I guess we can just say, make you covered it. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Like yeah. and subscribe.